Katie, right here, Orlando, okay. together. Katie, Orlando, in the beginning, right in the beginning. Guys, let's fight us together. Mr. Blum, just right here for me. Right? Orlando, you're great. Man. Oh, you're to step out yeah, Orlando, you're great. Right? Hey, guys, chew it. Turn this way a little bit. One more time. One time right here. Smile. Yeah, one more time, sir. And one more smile, please. Did I do something? One more time. Right here, one more time. Hold that shot. I really honestly felt like I'd never seen a world like this. Um, this is, of course, the brainchild of Travis Beecham, who's our creative, um, you know, imagine and director and showrunner and creator. He, it was, it was a character that I thought, wow, if I'm gonna, you know, get involved in, in a TV world, which is so exciting in the world we live in today, I was like, the thing for me is, how am I gonna like really dive into like eight hours of TV? Because really, that's what we're doing. It's an eight hour movie and, and potentially more, you know, obviously we're going into a second series. And I was like, there was just so much to mine within there, so much humanity, so much empathy. And there's a sort of interesting commentary on the world at large, many of the big issues that are in the world, but, but really it's also a wonderful noir, detective, drama thriller and um, it felt like it had a little bit for everybody and um, and a world that I was excited to see I hope that people will come for the entertainment and stay for the for the for the social messaging and the idea that actually when like art mirrors life life mirrors art you kind of you, you get something more than just what you paid for you know which is I think as an actor that's the greatest gift I have to say a big like a big shout out to Amazon for the way that they have really got behind the show and and put it put their best foot forward to, to make something really special. I think, you know, to have greenlit the show before it comes out is a big, you know, pat on the back and a, a big sign of how confident they feel about both, you know, the material and the work that's been done in it. And, and you know, look, it's a kind of, it's lighting in a bottle, isn't it? We've done it before, we've been here before, we know. So it's like, hopefully, you know, audiences respond in the same way with the same excitement that we got into it.
This is 20 years of, of, of work and people think, oh, it's a game, but there's somebody trying to be like Game of Thrones. No, it's not. We, we're Carnival Row. We're not, we literally came, like, you know, we went into pre-production, we went into filming two years before. And, it, and, I, and I mean, like, by the way, Game of Thrones is phenomenal. That's a, a great honor, that's a tall card. But what I mean is, it's, it's, it's really, like, this is 20 years of love and labor for, for, for Travis and, and for us, you know, I mean, like, we've, we've been already three years, three years in the making. So, um, it's, there's, there's a lot of love in it and a lot of hard work and toil and sweat and everything that goes into trying to make, a, make something great. She's actually the, one of the first really very in-depth roles, and the closest I've ever gotten to a role, I think, in terms of just how in-depth characters are, but especially women, in this sense especially. She's had everything taken away from her, she's had every reason to build up all these walls, yet she's still compassionate and loving, and it's so confusing, even for me as another woman. It's, it's confusing to understand all her dynamics, and that's why just playing a role like that, which is so multifaceted, is one of the biggest gifts you can ever be given as an artist, really. The reason why it's so good is a social commentary because the point is it's meant to be in this era of like you know noir Victorian times, but everything that's going on is what's happening now. And you think, oh, that fits really well in Victorian times because they didn't know what they were doing. Yet it's happening right now, so that's why it's a kind of it's a good refreshing slap in the face that we all need. <laughs> I've always been very uh, passionate about doing my own stunts, you know, kind of being like a female Tom Cruise, but especially with this, I wanted to do all the flying as much as I possibly could. Obviously, some of it I couldn't do for literal insurance reasons, but it just was so important to me to really feel the character, even to understand what it feels like to have wings. You know, I would wear a very heavy backpack around on set and stupid things like that, but just anything to really feel the kind of repression of, of want it, especially being a fae in this world, because you're not allowed to be a fairy. But it's also the same as a woman being in those days, being in a corset. It's the same kind of repression and constricting control, I imagine, in some way. It's been really great. It's, it's really fun to work with a friend and work with someone who's so passionate about, you know, something so close to my heart as well. And he's just, he's very talented and very easy to work with. So we've just... I play Jonah Breakspear, my name's Artie, Artie Frushan. Uh, so my character is Jonah, he is the son of the Chancellor of the city that the, uh, the series takes place in, the Berg. He is a Lothario, he is um, a bit of a, a, bit of a ne'er-do-well and he, uh, you know, he takes life in his stride, he's very kind of cocksure about things until a few unexpected uh, yeah, nasty, sticky situations arise, and then he has to really get his get his act together. It was like so sophisticated and sexy the writing, and it was kind of authentically period. You know what I mean? I was like, I can't believe the show is written by Americans because it has this like crisp British, you know, elegance to it. So it was a delight to play. I play Sophie Longabain, who is the daughter of the opposition leader in Parliament. And she is a very complex, interesting character because she's basically been hidden away from the world for her entire life. But she's been reading books and listening to her father's political meetings and learning everything. And so she basically knows more than probably anyone else. <laughs> I just thought it was so fascinating and exciting. It's such a different um, world to just delve into. I was just really excited and desperate to get a part in it so I could be involved in this amazing world. I'm Jared Harris and I play Absalom Breakspear, who is the Chancellor of the Berg. This is my younger brother, Jamie. Jamie Harris. I play Sergeant Dombey, who's a little bit of a racist and nationalist. Thank you. I. I was taken by the, I love the noir element of it, the detective uh, sort of thriller element of it. Um, and it was th these sort of stories that where you have to invent a world um, where there's, it's not based on books, it's very difficult to do. And uh, Travis and Renee did an amazing job about building out this very, very cohesive world. The world felt very realistic. And, and I love my character because I felt he's quite relevant to today. And so it, 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 you were able to sort of dig deep into nationalists, you know, racism, and try and figure your way around it. Which I'm Tamsin Merchant, and I play Imogen Spurn Rose in Carnival Row. Um, Imogen is a very 
she is quite an unpleasant person when we meet her. <laughs> and it's quite fun to play that. I really wanted to be part of Carnival Row because I love the idea of having, like I've done a lot of period dramas but I've never done a period drama where I have a tea party with a guy with horns and hooves. Like that's really exciting. What do you, like, that's not something that I've ever seen before. It was so epic to do this. Basically it's an eight hour movie for Amazon. It's like an, a, an eight hour movie. My name's David Jesse and I play Agraeus Astreon, who is a fawn. Agraeus, in this world, um, there's a clear hierarchy where humans are at the top and fae folk kind of filter down and at the bottom are fawns, which is what my character is. But yet we meet Agraeus and he has broken through so many glass ceilings and finds himself at the top and we join, we join him where he's at the top. This show, I think, really taps into, in a fantastical way, it taps into how humans and they fear the fear of the other. Whatever the other is, whatever, whether it's change, whether it's a creature, whether it's a war, that, that fear of the other has always, always been around. And this show, more than any other show, really taps you know, you could do on TV nowadays, you can tell these giant stories that are more like multi-part movies, or even when we're in the writer's room, we're saying it's actually more like a book, really, and each episode being a different chapter. And, um, and it's just, it's, a, it's incredible fun, because it lets you tell these very, very complex, um, you know, just dripping with drama kind of stories. I, I had this idea in, a, in college, like in my dorm room, like 17 years ago, and was kind of writing it as, um, as just a fun thing, like a sandbox to play in, and didn't really imagine that anything would come of it. Um, and and lo and behold, like here we are, like 17 years later at the Chinese theater. It's just it's incredibly surreal to see it all come together. What I love it most about it is it's original. You know, like we live in a world where everything is based on a movie or a book or a comic book, or and I love all those things. But I love the fact that this is unique. You know, it's it's. There's nothing, you know, if you want to watch Carnival Row, you can't experience it in any other medium. You have to come to the show. And I love that. Like, that, that's to me, is something we need to do a little bit more of. The show is huge. It's very expansive. There are so many different storylines, so many different characters. And there is a little bit of something for everybody. We had, like, a crazy amounts of time and equipment and resources and it really is a cinematic experience because they allowed us all the things we needed to shoot a movie. Hi, it's Lisa. Now, the Emmys are pretty much the Oscars for television. Winning an Emmy is the biggest award an actor can win for their work on the small screen. Here are the top three winners. At number three, Mary Tyler Moore with seven wins and 15 nominations. At number two, Cloris Leachman with eight wins and 22 nominations. And coming in at number one is Julia Lewis-Dreyfus with 11 wins and 24 nominations. Now, do you like my t-shirt? You can get one for yourself and a link in the description.